Good morning, kids. We hope you had a very meaningful Holy Week and enjoyed celebrating Easter with your families. We missed you last week and we are excited to be with you again in our online AKM class today. Welcome back to our series called Side A, Side B. Our second talk is entitled, Thinking Feet and Desperate Cry. My name is Teacher Grace from Peace PICC AM Session. We hope you are all safe at home with your family and looking forward to hearing our new lesson today. Kindly follow us on Facebook so we can bring our AKM class into your homes. Let us call Teacher Farah for the opening prayer. Let us all remember that we are in the presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we glorify you and give you thanks for your unconditional love for all of us. We pray for the Holy Spirit to be with us as we listen to your word. Open our hearts and minds that we may apply in our lives the learnings we will acquire from the talk today. All this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Teacher Farah. Let us now call Martin to pray the Novena to God's Love. Let's all pray the novena to God's love in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open my, myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved, I'm God's servant, and I'm God's powerful champion. And because I'm blessed, I'm blessing the world. In Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Martin. Our story from today's lesson is about Jesus walking on water, taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 23. There are five messages we want to impart to you from this story. Let us start by reading the first two verses. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake, while he sent the people home. After sending them home, he, sent, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. If you remember in our last lesson, Jesus lost a loved one, his beloved cousin John. He left in a boat to a remote area to be alone, but a crowd of approximately 12,000 people followed him as soon as they heard where Jesus was. Do you remember what happened next? He helped the crowd and healed their sick, and not only that, he also fed them. As soon as they were all done eating, Jesus saw his opportunity. Jesus sent the disciples away and sent the people home so he could pray and be alone. This gives us our first message for today. Message number one, God wants a one-on-one -on -one with you. When you are at a standstill, you often ask other people for advice such as your parents, or your teachers, or even your classmates and friends. Decision-making can be difficult, especially when you get different perspectives from people around you. At a certain point in your decision-making, you must stop listening to the crowd. After asking the people closest to you, you must also stop listening to them. Go to the inner closet of your heart and have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with God. Ask Him to speak to you and to reveal to you what He wants you to do. In the same way that Jesus went up to the hill to be alone with God, we also must do this regularly, especially when the people around us are very noisy. Message number two, God will allow you to enter storms. In our story, Jesus asked His disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. On the way, they met a storm which shows that Jesus deliberately sent them to the storm. Why do you think so? It is because following Jesus is not about avoiding problems, it's about transforming you. Challenges and problems actually help you become wiser and stronger. So instead of praying for an easy life, 
pray for a meaningful one. Ask God to help you face the difficulties in life. Ask Him to give you strength and peace. To continue the story and give us the remaining messages, let us now call Teacher Ray. Thank you, Teacher Grace. Let's continue our story by reading through verses 24 to 31. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, It's a ghost! But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you, walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water towards Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? Message number three, God's timing is perfect. The original Greek translation for verse 25 literally says, At the fourth watch of the night, the ancients divided nighttime into four parts or four watches. The first watch was 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. The second was 9 p.m. to 12 midnight. The third was 12 midnight to 3 a.m. And the fourth was 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. Jesus came not on the first or second or third watch. He came at the fourth watch. Sometimes, God comes at the last watch of the night. But He is never late. He always has the perfect timing. Trust that God will show up at the right time. Message number four, God is still in charge. In the ancient times, the sea was a place to be feared. To them, water is a symbol of chaos because it is something they cannot control. The Sea of Galilee in particular is known for its sudden violent storms. Jesus walking on water shows that he is Lord over chaos. In our story, both Jesus and Peter walked on water. Peter got out of the boat and began walking towards Jesus. Then Peter started looking around and noticing all of the waves and wind. He stopped thinking about Jesus and started thinking about the water. Then Peter began to sink in the water. You have a choice. You can look at the wind and the waves around you, or you can look at Jesus in front of you. If you look at the discouraging circumstances around you, you're going to sink. Are you worried that the bad things that are happening around you will not end? Do not be afraid. All you need to do is to keep your eyes on Jesus. He is Lord over the storms and violent winds. Trust that God always has a purpose for this and something good will always come out of it. Message number five, God will rescue you. This is also our big message for today. God will rescue you. The main message of our story today is that even if you lose sight of Jesus, even if you get distracted by the winds and waves, and if you lose your faith, and if you fail, God will rescue you. This story is primarily not about how strong our faith should be, but about how strong God's love for us already is, no matter what happens. Peter got distracted and began to sink, and then he yelled out to Jesus to save him. Despite Peter being doubtful of Jesus' power, Jesus still reached down to catch him. Do you have faith in Jesus? He will rescue you when you lack faith. If you lack faith, pray for it. God will rescue you by giving you faith. God will also rescue you when you fail Him. Faith is a relationship. It is a journey full of ups and downs. Sometimes you're up, like when Peter walked on water. 
but sometimes you're down, like when Peter sank in the water. And God will rescue you. Let's now call Teacher Farah for the activity. Hi kids! Good morning! Welcome to AKM 10 to 12 Kids Activity Online. This is Teacher Farah to explain to you our activity, which is the portable prayer box. We learned from the talk today that God wants to have a one-on-one -on -one intimate time with us. This is our prayer time with God either in verbal or written form. We can connect with God through our written prayers in the prayer box. Think of it as a mailbox to God. Using an old box, Altoid tin, any drawer or ball. All you need to do is decorate it in a way that suits you. Then add a small pad and paper inside to house your thoughts, wishes, and prayers. Here are the materials we will need. Old box or old Altoid tin, glue, colored pens, small pad and paper, a pair of scissors, ribbon, sticker, stick-on gems, and any other decorative items you'd like to use. First, clean the box, container, or outside steam. Second, decorate the cover of your prayer box. Make sure it's something you really love, since you'll be looking at it a lot. It may be a family photo, a drawing, a Bible verse, or simply just the words, prayer box. Third, glue a prayer, a poem, or a Bible verse inside. You may write there, when your head starts to worry and your mind just can't rest, put your prayers down on paper and let God do the rest. Or, call upon me and pray to me and I will hear you. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 12 Fourth, add some string, ribbon, stickers, or glitter to complete the prayer box. Be creative and artistic. Finally, put a pen and some paper into the box, ready to write down what you're praying for. We would love to see you and your work. Please take a photo of you holding what you made and post it in the comment section of our Facebook page. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you again next Sunday. God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for touching our hearts with today's lesson. We commit to have a one-on-one -on -one intimate time with you every day, no matter how busy our schedule is. We pray for a meaningful life, a life of selflessness, surrender, and sacrifice. Thank you for taking charge in our lives during this storm, for your timing is always perfect. We pray for the healing of the sick, most especially those infected with the COVID-19 virus. We truly believe that you will always rescue us, Lord. All this we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.